award-winning performer Aviva Pelham is joining me in studio. Now, she's just about to start her one-woman show, Santa's Story. Hello. Hello, good morning. Now, tell me about Santa's Story. It's about your mother, your mother is Santa. Yes. Now, why don't you introduce us to this story that we're going to experience on stage very soon? What happened was my mother turned 97 years ago, mm -hmm. so we encouraged her to write a memoir, which she did with my daughter. My daughter had taken a transcript that was taken of conversations with my mother, all the memories she had, with some extra research put in by somebody called Gwen Robbins. But then my daughter sat with my mom for many weeks and many months and changed and put in and got the facts right, and um, her memoir was born. And after that, which was really only meant for the grandchildren and the right. great-grandchildren, right. lots of people were very interested. And a director called Janice Honeyman, very well known, who I've worked with on several occasions, mm -hmm. said, you've got to do a one-woman show. So we brought down this memoir to be about an hour and wow. a quarter. An How did hour, you do that? 20 minutes. We just tried to choose the very salient points of Santa's story, though we do put in Jack's story too, which is my father's. Mm -hmm side. It, it's fascinating how these two people's lives uh, went to so many different countries and eventually they met. Although they were strangers, they, they married while they were strangers. They wow. barely, he, he asked her to marry her from, from Africa and she was a refugee in France at the time. So it, it's an incredible story. Um, and then, of course, once it was going to be put on stage, I thought, got to have music. Because yes. my family's very musical. And so every place that we go to, every situation is punctuated with a song. And these songs are from, from Spain and France. I sing in French, Spanish, um, Yiddish, Hebrew, English. And so it's are you fluent in all of those languages? I'm not fluent in all of them. I can speak a bit of French. I can speak a little bit of Italian, mm -hmm. um, very little Spanish, though it's quite close to the, to the Italian. I understand a bit and speak a bit of Hebrew yeah. and, and Yiddish, but I'm not a linguist like my mom. She mm. speaks fluently five languages, wow. including German. And my father, who came from Poland, also spoke five or six languages. I'm so envious of people who can. I'm also really envious of you, people You get who right can into a, a new culture and you, mm. yeah, it's, it's, it's just a passport into a whole new world. Now you've condensed your mother's memoir into, like you said, about an hour, 20 minutes. Hour 15, yeah. Hour 15, hour 20. Because I'm now running, because I've done about 40, 50 performances oh of it, so it's, it's going now, <laughs> <laughs> at last. Now tell us about the journey we're going to see on stage. I know that your mother survived the Holocaust. This, yes. this must be quite, I don't want to say dramatic, but quite an emotional thing for you to yeah. go through every yeah. night on stage. Yeah. How do you do that? Look, I've I've had it since I was a little girl, mm -hmm. knowing that she had had such a terrible, terrible time. Um, so we shared when she was ready, she told us girls, and we've often asked along the way, and I've always tried to understand what, what it must have been like having that kind of youth, mm -hmm. where one was uh, constantly ne never free, all this racism, anti-Semitism, right. which, which relates to xenophobia which is happening right here and how they had to run as refugees from country to country and how actually by sheer luck of, of having a correspondence with my father who asked her to marry him by proxy right. she got out but her parents didn't her brother didn't and m as we know tragically six million Jews didn't and many many other p victims of the Holocaust of this evil cruel madness so you're right, you're absolutely right. When we go through it and when I resonate with her, try, try and embody her and a young girl in that situation, I find it very, very sad. And uh, obviously it helps to have a, a lot of experience on stage, which I have, but more in, in the singing line, more in opera, operetta, musicals. Um, this was very different for me to do a one-woman show. It was a lot of words in, in an hour 20, but I, I really don't have to find any kind of technique or, or even dig down deep for, for tears or for any kind of resonating with emotions. I, I just mm -hmm. feel it. I, I yeah. feel it and I think authentically. Do you remember the first time you heard your mother's story? Yes, I do. Uh, she, sh she told us bits, bits at mm -hmm. a time and I think I was only about eight or nine when I wow. first started getting it. I was, I was horrified for her. 
I, I do know that I was already driving, which means I was 16 because we came from Rhodesia mm -hmm. and you got your license when you were 16. <laughs> no, I was driving at 14. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I remember this specifically because the movies were coming back and back about what happened mm -hmm. in the Holocaust and movies about the Holocaust, um, full on movies from Hollywood. And my mom needed, she needed to, to see it, it was this terrible feeling of having to witness it because of what her parents had gone through and, and what she had gone through and the losing of them and her brother. And she wanted to go to those movies. And I used to drive her there. She used to go like every afternoon. Oh my gosh. And I would drive her there and fetch her. And she, would, she became stony faced. She just, it, it was really very sad uh, times. And I, I, I couldn't help feeling it with her. And uh, what was it like when your mother first saw the show? Tell me about that experience. When I first told her I was going to do a show, mm. she said, on my story? Why? She was very modest and very, very taken. Are you sure? And um, don't forget when I opened here the first time, 2012, she was already 95. Wow. She's a, 94. She's about to turn 97. Incredible. It's, it, it is incredible. And she came and she was very moved. Again, she's got a dignity. She's got a. She's got some kind of resolve about it now. Mm -hmm. After all these years, I think it's taken a long time. Where she just can witness it, and watch. I mean, don't forget, it's her. It's all those slides of her from her youth right the way through marriage with my father and and afterwards, and uh, it is pretty emotional for her. At the very end, what I do, after we've taken our bows, because I've got three musos. Yeah, oh, it's okay, a one-woman right, right. show, but I've but got three musicians. I've got you? wonderful <laughs> musicians on stage. What we do is, I, uh, at the time, my mom could come on the stage. Now I go down to her, uh, in her front, in the front row, and she sings. She sings with the musicians. It is so moving. People are, are weeping, and they are very moved. But it's not, it's not a, a terrible piece to sit through. Yeah. Be, although there, there are uh, obviously facts that are. Are difficult to to believe. Uh, it is an, it's a story of, of hope. It's mm -hmm. a story of survival. It's a story of courage and it's and inspiration.